All right, so as many of you know, Iowa did not go the way that any of us expected. In fact, it was a complete and utter disaster, and I have a dumpster fire to represent the entire process itself, and I apologize for the delay in getting this video out. I just wanted to wait until I had the most updated results. They claimed that they might release information at around this time. It's 2.46 p.m. PST at the time I record this, and we just got some results. Now, the Iowa State Democratic Party uh, apparently won't say when they're going to release the rest of the results, but as it stands currently with 62% reporting, um, that's all we have. Apparently, Pete Buttigieg is in the lead. Bernie Sanders is winning with a popular vote in the first and second alignment totals, although Pete Buttigieg somehow has more state delegate equivalents. And the process itself doesn't really make sense. There's a lot of confusion. And to add to the confusion, Bernie Sanders released last night at around, I want to say, uh, 11 p.m. He released his own internal numbers, which showed with 40% of precincts reporting, he had about a five-point lead uh, over Pete Buttigieg. Elizabeth Warren was in third, and Joe Biden was not viable. And then this morning, he gave us the update with 60% of precincts, and he still had that same five-point lead over Pete Buttigieg, almost five points, give or take. Senator Sanders with 29.08, uh, Mayor Buttigieg with 21.63, Senator Warren with 19.51, Senator Klobuchar with 12.27, and, and Vice President Biden at 12.04. Uh, Post realignment, those numbers are Senator Sanders 29.4, Mayor Buttigieg 24.87, Senator Warren 20.65, uh, Vice President Biden, 12.92, and Senator Klobuchar, 11.18. Again, these uh, the, the spreads in these results have been pretty consistent all through the night. Uh, by the time we had about 15% uh, in, uh, the, these results have held across uh, all the reporting. So we anticipate that this will hold probably to... So he's obviously getting different precincts reported than what is being reported here. You know, there's there's different precincts. We don't necessarily know, although currently based on the official tally, it seems like Pete Buttigieg has the slight ed edge overall. And a lot of people are trying to scramble to make sense of the situation. I'm going to play a clip from MSNBC Steve Kornacki, who tries to digest these results. And you can tell even he doesn't necessarily know what's going on. There are three different categories. They were all just released at once. What you're seeing on your screen right now, this is the state delegate equivalent category. <clears throat> this is, uh, so the numbers you see underneath, 359 for Buttigieg, 334 for Sanders, 243 for Elizabeth Warren. These are state delegate equivalents. Now remember, there are about 2,100 of these statewide. So Buttigieg with 359, that's accounting for 27%. You can start to do the math of what that accounts for. These are, this is a complicated formula where each precinct in the state is worth a certain number of state delegate equivalents. They work their way up. Notably, let me make sure I saw this right. This is the final product. This is the initial preference. Yes, we have a discrepancy right now. Huh. The initial preference when people showed up, this is, remember, these are not final results right now. He said 62% of precincts. We got to see what that exactly accounts for in terms of votes here. But right now, the numbers that the Iowa Democratic Party just released, the initial preference in these precincts, you can see, was Sanders 24, Buttigieg 21, Warren 19, Biden 15, you can see Klobuchar 13, and you can see what happens. Remember, in every precinct, 15% the magic number. So let's show you what happened then. Again, for all these precincts, this is the second, this is the reallocation. So watch, remember those numbers? Now watch this. And there you go. San no, wow, so Sanders on the second allocation continues to lead much tighter. So how does Sanders lead in the state delegate equivalent? Uh, excuse me, how does Buttigieg lead in the state delegate equivalent? If he's not leading on the second allocation, it gets into, and I got to take a look here very closely, but my theory, my suspicion here, strong suspicion would be what we've been talking about. These counties are weighted differently here. The rural counties have a little bit more clout when it comes to the state delegate equivalents. And you can see here Buttigieg in dark blue. These are rural counties. These are rural counties. Sanders purple, College County, College County, College County, watch, 52% for Sanders here. These counties lose influence, lose clout in the state delegates. And so therefore, I think what you're seeing 
is the clout of the Buttigieg counties in the state delegate equivalent. So it seems like at the time I'm recording this, there are other larger counties that should be coming in that theoretically should help Bernie Sanders. Uh, Pete Buttigieg is having that rural bump, but I mean, it doesn't really matter. The media is going to run away with this narrative that he is victorious. One, because he already declared victory, and two, because we knew that they would do this Anyway, like in the event Bernie Sanders won and somebody else came in second place, I think it was obvious to all of us that that individual would be the new uh, front runner in their view or the person who can beat Bernie Sanders. Now, a lot of people, regardless if they believe that malfeasance is happening or just incompetence, they don't believe in the process. I don't believe in the process. Like, I feel so demoralized by this process and feel as if this process is so illegitimate that we need an international impartial entity to monitor our primary process because this is just the first of 50 primaries we've got 49 to go and what a debacle this has been now not to mention there's a lot of conflicts of interest at play there that make matters worse so first of all the iowa state democratic party lied to us they, when the results were supposed to start coming in, told us that there was a little bit of a delay because of quality assurance. Now, nobody knows what that means. Nobody trusts the Iowa State Democratic Party or the DNC. I want a quality check on their quality assurance check. Um, but they later came out and said, actually, the app that we're using to report the numbers isn't working. It is an app developed by this uh, company called Shadow. And this is a company that Pete Buttigieg's campaign suspiciously donated more than $20,000 to two times. Iowa Democrats would not tell us in advance, uh, but we have now determined that it was a company, um, a, a, a company that is affiliated with a company called Acronym. And now Acronym's CEO is married to a senior advisor of Pete Buttigieg. Uh, and his brother also works on that campaign in Iowa. So no matter what some people say at this point, um, that you know there's, there's no leakage, there's no uh, contamination, there are going to be those who believe uh, that this app itself was leaning towards uh, Mayor Pete. So there are a lot of issues yet to be explored. And their CEO was celebrating once Pete Buttigieg entered the race. Now this company is comprised of former Hillary Clinton alum. Because after demonstrating that they're part of a team that is the most incompetent in Democratic Party history, of course they'd go on to fail up and get jobs developing an app that literally, you know, is going to influence democracy. So look, let me just say this. The bare minimum, the bare minimum that we should have expected was results, vote totals, but we couldn't get that. And you have CBS News reporters, for example, blaming Bernie Sanders for this because during the Unity Reform Commission at the DNC, he dared to ask for more transparency. What's happening tonight, Elaine, is exactly what Bernie Sanders asked for, or whenever the results are released, in that we're gonna have several data sets to work with tonight, or whenever the results come. First round, how much support each candidate got. The second round, raw total results, and then the delegate count. That's three data sets. The only one that matters is the delegate count, ultimately, whenever we get it. Okay, well, assuming that, that that is true and it takes that much longer to do basic math, well, shouldn't it only take, like, three times longer if you're doing three different numbers? <laughs> I mean, what we're asking for is the bare minimum that is required for a democracy to count the fucking votes. And we can't even get that. We can't even get a straight answer. First, they say quality control. Now they say the app. Okay, well, if the app isn't working, then what do you do? You do what you did last time. You call it in. Precinct captains call in the numbers. And they were on hold for hours. Couldn't even get that through. So the old process couldn't even help recover and save this disaster after the new process failed. And this is the app that is supposed to be used for the Nevada caucuses, but thankfully there are reports that they're not going to use it after this. But I mean, this is completely unacceptable. And to make matters worse, people don't even believe that there will be the most minimal amount of accountability. Like, is there going to be a lawsuit with Shadow? Is the Iowa State Democratic Party 
chair going to resign? Is Tom Perez going to resign? Like, you have this situation where this is an international embarrassment and there's probably going to be no accountability and nobody trusts the process. Regardless if you believe that there's this sinister plot to overthrow Bernie Sanders' lead. Regardless if you think that that's not happening and this is just, you know, due to incompetence. It doesn't matter. Voters do not come out to support Democrats if they don't believe in the process. This is why Democrats lose. This is why Donald Trump has a very good shot of getting reelected because when voters stay home, Republicans win and nobody believes in the process. Nobody thinks it's legitimate. The Democratic Party has done more than enough to delegitimize the process and we're just getting started. This is the first primary of 49. What a fucking disaster. What a disaster. I mean, of epic proportions. Again, we need the UN or some international entity to oversee our elections because nobody trusts the democratic process. Nobody. Here's the thing about Iowa. Pledge delegates from that state, it's such a minimal amount, you know, in the broad context of the overall Democratic Party primary process. But the reason why Iowa is so important, one, is because it's the first contest. And two, because usually this sets out a really important media narrative, regardless if that narrative is going to be pundits and on MSNBC crying about Bernie Sanders' victory. A narrative is really what this is all about. It's why individuals like my friend Joy Marie of Savage Joy literally dedicated five weeks of her life knocking on doors for Bernie in Iowa, and she can't even get the full results. But we got 62%, and uh, they won't say when we get the rest of it. Is it going to be before the Friday Democratic Party debate? Will it be before Super Tuesday? I mean, do you understand how ridiculous this is? You have someone preemptively declaring victory before we've seen any numbers. You have Joe Biden calling into question the entire process itself, saying it's illegitimate, probably because, you know, that first uh, numbers that we saw showed him not really being viable. But now we're at a situation where we don't necessarily know if we can trust these numbers. We don't know what to expect. We don't know if there will be other precincts that come in. We don't know if they're showing us the correct information. Why not just show us the precinct totals? We just don't know. It's an open question. And that is why the process is so fucked. Because how do you expect voters to have faith in this process? Our institutions have been completely delegitimized. And the Democratic Party is to blame. And I see, you know, individuals on Twitter who work in mainstream media browbeating people for, you know, raising suspicions and sounding the alarm and even being conspiratorial. But I mean, I don't blame people for being conspiratorial when the Democratic Party is so incompetent and where <laughs> this whole last week we saw headlines of, you know, the Democratic Party establishment being tormented over the fact that Bernie might run away with the nomination. And, um, you know, we see DNC insiders plotting to bring back superdelegates to possibly steal the nomination away from Bernie Sanders at the convention. I mean, how do you not expect these types of conspiracies to proliferate when people have so little faith in the system that we're supposed to trust? Like, we're supposed to be the modern model for democracy around the world. We browbeat other countries for not being democratic enough, and we can't even get a fucking vote count. Like, do you understand? And now all of these, you know, scandals emerge as we're expecting the results, where Pete Buttigieg's campaign is in cahoots with the company that, that develops the app that reports the information to us. And look at that, he's in the lead. Do you not see why people are frustrated and demoralized with this process? Do you not understand why that's the case? Can you not empathize with voters here who are, you know, very turned off by the process because of instances like this? Do you not get it? Who doesn't get it at this point? People who are being intentionally obtuse. But let me just tell you this. Bernie supporters. This, regardless if it was intentional or due to incompetence, was meant to demoralize us. We're all feeling demoralized. We're all feeling down. But guess what I'm doing? After I finish this video, I'm going to donate to Bernie Sanders because this is not going to rattle us. I don't give a shit who wins. Pete Buttigieg, even if he is the winner of Iowa, guess what? That's not going to give him enough pledge delegates, no matter what the media narrative is. Currently, he doesn't really have a path to the nomination when you have no young supporters, when you have almost no support among black voters. We can still win this, so don't feel down. We're going to just absolutely blow out the field in New Hampshire, okay? So I don't want this to get you down because this is what they want. It's not conspiratorial to question why the state 
of Iowa and their Democratic Party is choosing to not even say when they're going to release the full results. Maybe they're doing this because they love this Pete Buttigieg narrative of him being victorious and they just want to sit on it. Nobody knows, and I don't even care to speculate. All I know is this is not going to rattle us. In fact, it's going to make us fight 10 times harder because we knew that they would fuck up this process in some way, shape, or form. We knew that this was going to be the case, and you motherfuckers thought that you could demoralize us? Not at all. We donate. We're stronger. Because guess what? This is a movement that we have been fighting for for four years, and if we're going to beat Donald Trump, the only person who has a shot in hell is Bernie Sanders, so we have no fucking choice. We have to keep going. We have to keep fighting. We have to keep knocking on doors for Bernie Sanders and understand but if you feel like your time was wasted in Iowa, I get you. I feel really, you know, uh, sad for the fact that you you haven't gotten the bare minimum of what you deserve. It's the fucking vote total. But guess what? That was to our benefit. Everything you did was a down payment on a Bernie Sanders presidency. And we will fucking keep fighting no matter what the results are. I don't care how demoralized we feel. I don't care how depressed these results or lack thereof makes me. I'm going to keep fighting because guess what? We don't have a choice. So I will be doing some additional videos with, um, you know, some uh, segments that I want to talk about. And um, this is just the results currently. I uh, Let me check really quick before I turn off the camera. It's difficult to record when we have almost no certainty that things will change. Um, we also have an apology from Shadow Company. I'm not even going to read that. But, um, yeah. We have nothing else. We don't know who the winner of Iowa officially is. We don't know when we're going to find out. It's just a huge open question. And what I do know is that this is not a good look for the Democratic Party. When you have a whole state party apparatus unable to conduct a basic primary where you count the numbers, something you know a third grader can do with the assistance of a national Democratic Party, the DNC, it's just, it's not a good look. And they better hope that Bernie Sanders wins this nomination because nobody else is competent enough to take on Donald Trump. Because everyone who worked for Hillary Clinton is still working for the Democratic Party. They're developing apps that are used to tally the votes. Great job. Great job, guys. They're running campaigns. They're in Elizabeth Warren's campaign now. They never learn. So the only person who has a shot is Bernie because... He doesn't have these <laughs> incompetent ghouls who are just worried about their own careers running his campaign. He's our only chance. So that's why I say we're not going to stop fighting, you know, to the chagrin of the establishment because we don't have a fucking choice. Nobody else will come close to beating Donald Trump. I don't know that anyone will beat Donald Trump, but if I know we're going to have a shot, it'll be with Bernie Sanders and we're going to fight like fuck to make sure that he is the one who's the nominee. So bring it on, establishment, because we expected this, and your attempt to demoralize us, regardless if it's intentional or not, is not going to work.